Hi, my name is Joachim. I'm a software engineering manager at Microsoft. I'm here to talk about Headlamp, an extensible Kubernetes UI that you can use to create custom user experiences for your own tools. So I thought of starting by uh, having a, a use case here. So let's say you have a, a tool in Kubernetes. Um, maybe it works by, by having a custom resource to deliver uh, some uh, you know custom behavior, uh, and let's say that if users want to change that, of course they have to go to the cluster and uh, edit the YAML, and things happen, right? So a much easier way would be if you could deliver something uh, a bit easier. Uh, so maybe a button where users click, and in the in the background it does those changes, so they don't have to exactly know what to change, right? Um, so in this case, if if you want to, to do something like that, um, there are, of course, many options. So one of them would be to have a kubectl uh, plugin. Um, and if you create that, uh, although that's, that's uh, of course, uh, nice, you have, uh, it's, a, it's a command line uh, tool again. So it still requires some, some level or, or some knowledge of, of what the user needs to do to be able to, or to be productive with it, right? On the other hand, probably uh, a nicer option for, especially for novice users, would be to uh, have a graphical user application or maybe a web app uh, that is run uh, and has a nice UI for the user. So if you want to do this, um, of course, this requires maintaining an entire app. You have to create the app, you have to uh, implement the app and run the test and all that. Um, and you have to implement a lot of the, of the functionality that is common to Kubernetes anyway. So probably you want to list the pods, right? Or you want to, of course, get the get the custom resource uh, for the user to add it. Um, and of course, this also requires promoting the app itself. It's a it's a whole project in itself with a, a lot of the base where a lot of the base uh, is common to other um, you know apps doing similar things. So this is one of the reasons. Uh, why we created Headlamp. So let's look more into it. Um, so Headlamp is a Kubernetes UI, uh, like I mentioned. Uh, in this case, it's uh, it's also a vendor independent uh, Kubernetes UI or generic. So we don't we don't uh, make it work only with one flavor of Kubernetes. It's not it's not targeting any specific flavor of Kubernetes. Uh, some UIs you can run in the cluster, others you can run as desktop desktop apps. Uh, we wanted it to be flexible and supporting different use cases, so we allow both. Uh, you can definitely run it in the cluster, uh, or you can, uh, or we have you know uh, uh, different builds for for different uh, flavors of desktops. In, in this case, Linux, Mac, and Windows. Um, some UIs of, uh, also require certain permissions to run, and this can be a sensitive topic uh, because it touches security, right? So uh, in this case, we think it's not a UI that should have the permissions, it's the user. Uh, so if a user is running with a service account, for example, um, Headlamp uses that and uh, and we'll uh, check it and we'll check what can be done through our back. And uh, this means that the UI also reflects um, the, the, the user's role. So for example, if the user cannot update or delete a resource, uh, the UI does not show any edit or delete buttons because that makes no sense. So the idea is that the UI adapts to what the user can do. Uh, yeah, so it's, of course, 100% open source. Uh, we develop it in the open. Um, and uh, very important, it's accessible uh, by the use of, by using what we call front-end plugins. And we'll dive deeper into that. Yeah, um, of course, I said it. You can run it as uh, you can run it in, in clusters. So there is a container image uh, that we publish officially, uh, and we have the official builds uh, for desktop app for, uh, as well. And in this case, uh, of course, being Linux, we have a variety of formats in there: uh, Flatpak, uh, Debian, and Tarballs, for example. Uh, with uh, for Windows, we do have it published for uh, to WinGet and Chocolatey, so it's very easy to just. Uh, Run the commands, install, and update uh, Headlamp, and kind of the same for for Mac uh, with Homebrew, right? Now, just quickly about the architecture. 
there's a lot of text in this slide, but I'm just going to uh, go quickly uh, through it. Uh, like many web applications, Headlamp has a backend and a, and a frontend. Uh, the backend is written in Go. Uh, it's the one that, uh, for example, if you're running as a desktop app, it's the one that uh, reads the cube config uh, from the user uh, to tell, hey, we got this cluster going on in this machine. Uh, it has some other functionality, for example, for running uh, port forwarding and all that. Um, but it's actually a very small part of the whole project. So most of the logic is in the front end. And in this case, the front end is written in TypeScript. Um, yeah, it, like I said, most of the logic is, is, is in the front end and even the, the logic that concerns Kubernetes. So uh, when we list uh, resources in Kubernetes, actually is the front end that prepares that uh, API call, sends it to the back end, the back end knows uh, how, where to redirect and get the response back. Um, but I'm gonna show uh, a diagram about that. Uh, in the front end, of course, uh, since we support so many um, different use cases or platforms, we have some flags that tell us, okay, this is running as a desktop app, so maybe do not enable this feature or enable this other feature. Sometimes that's necessary. Another layer here uh, is the application itself. Uh, so it's, uh, in this case, uh, an Electron application. We write it with uh, TypeScript. Um, yeah, it's just a, another layer we have, but basically uh, the UI is the same. What you get in the web app is pretty much what you get in, in the application, uh, in the desktop application itself. And yes, the other big layer uh, is the plugins um, layer. So in this case, like I said, these are what we call it front-end plugins. So they're, they're basically JavaScript bundles. Uh, they're written with TypeScript. Uh, yeah, and we have some APIs uh, for plugins to change the functionality. Uh, not only of of, uh, of headlamp, but also to to make it easy for plugins to to list resources and you know just basically interact with the Kubernetes server. Yeah, so this is a very simple diagram of what uh, of of how headlamp works. Let's say we have three clusters like those up there, and then at the bottom area area is um, is representing what is the headlamp application. Um, as I said before. So the front end in the, in the, in the example here uh, wants to, for example, list the pods. So it prepares the API to be sent to the, to the Kubernetes API server, but it sends it to the backend. The backend knows which cluster to apply uh, that call to, and then sends it back uh, to the front end. Uh, in, the, in the picture, the plugins are also connected to the backend here, even though I just said before that they are front end plugins. But the reason for this design is that it's the backend that knows which plugins are uh, available uh, for the user or installed in this case. Uh, this design allows us to, for example, when a user is deploying headlamp um, in a shared environment like, like the web, uh, for example, or running it in, in cluster, then it's, it's up to the person deploying it to make sure that, okay, I'm running headlamp and I'm providing these, uh, app, these plugins, right? It's not the, the end user that should uh, uh, change the plugins or install new plugins in that case. Um, and uh, on, the, <clears throat> on, the, on the desktop side, though, uh, of course, the user can change the plugins and can install and remove. But these, of course, are still uh, are still managed by, by the backend in this case. So this, this design basically allows us to have uh, the, the best of, of, uh, of or, or to support these two use cases that are different. So going back again to the initial use, uh, use case or, or question, uh, how do you deliver a nice uh, UX for your application? You make a headlamp plugin, of course. Uh, so, and why, why, would, would, why would that be? Because the base functionality uh, for what you need from Kubernetes is already there. Uh, the whole UI has uh, customizable sections uh, and and then uh, I also wrote there fully custom UI sections, meaning that when you customize, for example, uh, a section, it's not just that you can change the, the label of this one button, right? Usually we say, okay, uh, you can deliver a component here in the UI and what the component does or what it looks like, it's up to you. So we have some components, of course, to make things look consistent, but uh, but the plugins have a lot of, uh, of freedom in that regard. Um, 
yeah, there is a, a library to, like I said, to just get the, the Kubernetes uh, um, functionality, uh, for example, listing resources, uh, uh, deleting resources and all that. And uh, and even the, the branding from Headlamp is customizable, right? So plugins have uh, access to, for example, changing the, the logo of Headlamp. So this allows you, uh, allows, um, I guess, vendors to deliver something that is very customized uh, to them. And uh, to manage all this, we have one script called Headlamp Plugin. This is how you create and uh, run and update uh, plugins in Headlamp. Okay, so we, we think this approach is so uh, powerful that we started using it our, ourselves. So initially, Headlamp was uh, that basic functionality that I talked about. Uh, you know, we we have the very common functionality to any UI you expect to have uh, in, in Kubernetes. Uh, so listing uh, workloads, uh, getting the, the, the description of the workloads, maybe deleting the workloads, that's all in there. But we also uh, wanted to uh, provide our own uh, view of what a, a, a great user experience around Kubernetes would be. So uh, earlier this year, we started shipping Headlamp also with, uh, with our own plugins, official plugins. So now we have these two concepts. Let me just go to the next slide. We have these two concepts, uh, which is headlamp base uh, and headlamp. So headlamp base, like I said, has no uh, no plugins. It ships without any. Uh, there there are no plugins in it. Uh, there is nothing that you need to install in the cluster for it to to work. Um, whereas headlamp itself uh, builds on top of that base and ships uh, with uh, plugins. So essentially it's the, it's the headlamp base plus uh, some plugins we curate. Um, and this may require some things to be run in the cluster. So if we have, for example, uh, we have, for example, a, a Prometheus uh, a plugin. So it supplies nice charts uh, powered by Prometheus. Obviously you have to have Prometheus run, right? Um, we believe that this way we, we still allow anyone that does not want this this extra functionality to to have uh, still the base for creating a great user experience uh, on top of headlamp uh, and at the same time we can also deliver something with a bit more value uh, or an advanced user experience to our, to our users. So so in the screenshot here, um, that's that's one of the plugins we have. That's the app catalog, and uh, and yeah, and you wouldn't find it just in the the, the headlamp uh, vanilla uh, or or base. So in terms of development and how to develop a plugin, uh, yeah, so plugins are independent from headlamp, so they have to be developed outside of the headlamp core, obviously. So you don't have to fork headlamp and keep developing uh, plugins inside. That's that's the whole idea, right? Uh, to have things separated. Um, yeah, and like I said, we have uh, one NPM package uh, called Headlamp Plugin uh, that can be used to create uh, or to bootstrap, uh, bootstrap a, a plugin, but it also uh, is how you can build the, the plugin and also how you update it. So it manages uh, uh, some of the, uh, well, the dependencies that, that the plugins have. Uh, yeah, and soon we'll have uh, even uh, an easier uh, an even easier way to do this by by using a VS Code plugin or extension. Uh, yeah, so Headlamp itself uses Material UI and React and other um, dependencies. Um, so that's all uh, that, that's all part of of, of Headlamp itself. Uh, and since those are common dependencies, uh, when you even if you are like importing from Material UI or importing from React, when you uh, when using the headline plugin uh, script to to create the bundle, uh, things are configured so that uh, only the only the, the dependencies that are not common uh, will be shipped uh, with the, the bundle. So so we can save some some of the of the size uh, in the bundle, uh, right? Yeah, and uh, on top of that, we have uh, also as part of the headline repo. In this case, uh, we have a, a plugin examples folder. And uh, we have uh, all the functionality that we expose to plugins. Let's say, okay, now we we allow to change the logo, so we create a, an example plugin uh, showing showcasing that uh, new functionality. 
Yeah, so you uh, and as, as for the official plugins that I said that Headlamp builds with, uh, of course, those are those are uh, just like Headlamp, they're, they're completely open source uh, and they're developed uh, inside this uh, different repo called uh, plugins, but under the same organization in GitHub. All right, so let's look at the demo now and uh, let me switch to it. Okay, I got Headlamp running from source here, as you can see, it's running in the browser now, and uh, this is the home view. I've got three clusters mm -hmm. configured, so let's quickly go into Minikube. And uh, yeah, not a lot going on because uh, this is a, a Minikube that I uh, started like a couple of hours ago. Um, but yeah, just to show you that this is pretty much the UI that you can uh, expect from a uh, from a Kubernetes uh, UI, you can navigate to the different uh, sources and types of sources, uh, right? You can uh, select it here. Uh, you can check, you know, configuration. Uh, for example, let's check this config map. Um, yeah, and uh, but to show you a little bit of the yeah the. The philosophy in, in Headlamp is that uh, the UI should adapt to the cluster and the users and not the other way around. So in this case, in, in this Minikube cluster, uh, the metric server is not installed, so we cannot get the usage metrics. So all we display here uh, is what's available. And we have some aid here saying, yeah, install the metric server uh, to get usage data. However, if we go to a cluster that conveniently has the metric server installed. So let me jump to the to this one, which is a NKS cluster. So this one has uh, uh, the metrics available and the UI adapts uh, to show it here, right? So let me show you also what I mentioned before about the role. So in this cluster, my role can pretty much do anything. So I have all the all the possibilities here. And that's why I'm seeing like an edit button and a, and a delete button. But if I could not delete this resource, for example, then the delete button would not be shown. Uh, also for any function that is kind of destructive, uh, we have uh, a grace period. So in this case, we can cancel this action that I just started. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, let me go uh, here to another section to show you that again all that you've been seeing is uh, pretty much the headland base and if I go uh, to for example one of the uh, pods let's check this one yeah so so in here you know in the pod view this is the description obviously uh, of the of this pod uh, I can check the logs um, I can exec into the into the pod or attach to it uh, or delete it. Uh, but this also shows you uh, well the the first uh, the first time we're showing something about the, the plugins here. So this <coughs> this chart um, this Prometheus power chart is actually a plugin. So it's running from a plugin even though it's completely uh, or seamlessly integrated in the UI. Right, that's the whole idea. Um, so in this case, uh, Prometheus is something that uh, you know, uh, is needed to install, and so we we have this uh, uh, this uh, capability as a plugin that we ship in Headlamp, uh, but not as part of the base, right? Um, so in fact, if we um, you know the plugins, uh, they they of course um, belong to 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 Headlamp as an as an application, and that means that uh, if we go to a different cluster, uh, the plugin is still there. Uh, but so let's go to uh, Minikube just quickly and uh, check one of the of the pods uh, or even this uh, deployment. Yeah, so in here I I don't have Prometheus installed and therefore uh, the plugin is, is still running, but it knows that uh, something is missing. So there's some guidance for for the user. All right. Um, yeah, let's. So many parts here in the UI, uh, uh, the plugins can customize uh, them. So we, we offer the functions to do that. 
Uh, and I wanted to show you just quickly how it looks like. So let me switch back to Visual Studio and let's go to this sidebar plugin that, I'm, that I have here. So this is one of the example uh, plugins that we have. And after you run npm install, because again, this is a, an npm, uh, uh, this is a node module, uh, you just run npm install. And then after that, uh, like, um, you know, any module that you develop, you can just run npm start. Uh, it can take a while for headline plugin to check if it's up to date, just because uh, since headline uh, plugin is the one that also keeps the plugins up to date, we want to make sure that it's always the latest version in case some things uh, need to be updated. So right now it says that it's already copied uh, the bundle to its uh, correct location. Let's go back here. And as you can see here, <clears throat> uh, you know, the, the sidebar already uh, reflects uh, some changes here. So it it was already there because it updated while we were looking into uh, at uh, VS Code. Uh, but every time uh, there is a change to the plugin uh, or a new plugin is installed or so, uh, the UI just uh, refreshes to reflect that. So um, yeah, so this this sidebar uh, is it's just an example. There's uh, you know this funny one that shows how dynamic it is. So if I click here, it just goes away and selects whatever was uh, before. Uh, but as you can see, it's not only just the sidebar that is changed, but actually now we have uh, a new route that was registered by this uh, plugin. So <clears throat> just to show you quickly the development, uh, uh, you know, how the development looks like. Let's go back to VS Code. And as you saw, as you saw here, uh, so we have like this embed uh, your feedback forms here. That's <coughs> sorry. That's the this very uh, string right here. Uh, so we can, uh, you know, let's change it. What you, oops, what you want here? Let's make it expressive. Now we save, and I'll go back, and I will not touch anything. <clears throat> Just to show you that. You know, after after I guess <clears throat> uh, some time, it just refreshes by itself and, and loads uh, the view. So so this allows us to continuously uh, you know develop and and get uh, and see the changes reflected right away. Yeah. So um, yeah. So this should give you a, an idea of how uh, seamlessly integrated uh, what the plugins uh, do uh, is. Uh, in, in the in the headlamp UI, um, I can also uh, you know show you uh, just quickly. Let me uh, let's just stop the uh, this uh, version from source. One second, I'll stop it, and I'll run the headlamp application. So now the headlamp application is running as a as a desktop application. And uh, as you can see, there's a, some slide. Uh, I make it a little bit smaller, just so you can see the there's some some changes. Uh, right now, since this is the desktop application and it's the user that is running the application that is in charge of updating it, uh, it does check for updates. Um, that's different from the the other version uh, where we, you know, if you're deploying it for other users, then you're the one that should be uh, checking for updates. Uh, yeah, in this version, we also have an, an extra button here because we allow to load uh, clusters. Uh, and let me make it bigger. If we go now to one of the of the clusters, you can see that uh, we have this apps uh, sidebar item integrated. And this is another uh, plugin that is officially shipped. Uh, so in this case, this is a plugin that displays Helm charts from uh, the Artifact Hub yeah. and uh, allows us to very quickly install one of the of the Helm charts. Uh, yeah, and uh, even though the menus here are part of the uh, application itself, uh, these are also changeable by plugins, for example. So hopefully this gives you an idea of, uh, you know, the capabilities that plugins have towards changing a uh, headlamp and allowing for uh, custom experiences to be developed uh, on top of it. So, yeah, so going back, you know, uh, 
let me just uh, that was the demo let me now mention a little bit about the community so uh as mentioned we're an open source project and uh we besides github uh we also interact with the community uh via uh slack in this case the kubernetes slack so yeah please uh join us if you want it in the in the headlamp channel in there and every time we have uh, news or a new release published we also uh, publish it to to the social media so you can follow us there and i also wanted to share this uh, screenshot here because this is a, a screenshot of a headlamp plugin that is developed by uh, by an external uh uh, by a team that is external to the Headlamp uh, core developers just to show uh, something that is uh, kind of a complex application uh, but also how how well integrated uh, it, it, it is in Headlamp uh, itself when when the plugin is available uh, is enabled of course um, yeah so uh, so so this is a this is a good example I think and that's all I've got I hope that I was able to communicate uh, what Headlamp can do for you as a as a, an advanced Kubernetes UI, but also as a way for you to uh, be able to build your own Kubernetes uh, custom user experiences. So thank you very much and uh, see you next time.